two, one. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Cushing's disease and horses, and you guys might have heard about Cushing's disease in humans and dogs, but for horses it's a little bit different because it affects a different part of the pituitary gland. So it is also known as pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction, or PPID, and veterinarians decide to give it this um, alternative name because it's more accurate for horses specifically. Um, it's also the most common endocrine disorder in horses, and it's more common in older horses. So the average age um, of diagnosis is 20 years old. Um, it can happen in younger horses too, but the range is usually seven years to 20 plus years. And Lauren, just for uh, a baseline, what's the average lifespan of a horse that you that you've been familiar with, or heard um, of? if the horse is healthy, I would say late 20s, early 30s if you're really lucky. Okay. So what happens is a pituitary adenoma develops in the pituitary gland, and this term right here just refers to a tumor. And the part of the pituitary gland specifically is called the pars intermedia, so that's an intermediate um, part of the pituitary gland. Um, in dogs and humans, it normally affects the anterior portion, so that's how it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So um, the basic <coughs> function of the pituitary gland is um, it secretes hormones or signals for other endocrine glands to secrete hormones, so it helps regulate the functions of thyroid, adrenal, ovaries, testes, so you can imagine how much of the body it affects. And um, the result of this is excessive hormones are secreted. And that's where I kind of gave you the key. Cushing's, this is how I remember it, crushing too much of something. So um, what causes it? So the normal pituitary function um, in a normal horse that doesn't have this disease, um, basically melanotrope cells are cells in the pituitary gland and they receive neuron input from the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus sends signal to the melanotrope cells and the pituitary gland. And basically dopamine is released from the hypothalamus, which inhibits this intermediate part that I told you about um, from making and releasing hormones. So that's normal for a horse. Um, it kind of suppresses this um, making of a hormone, or too much of it. So when the pituitary gland it has this disease, these neurons from the hypothalamus degenerate and dopamine does not reach the pituitary. So that is bad because these melanotropes are not inhibited and what happens is hyper hypertrophy and hyperplasia, um, which just causes basically like a tumor growth in this intermediate section. Um, and you get production of high levels of the pituitary hormones. Um, the very common one that you guys are probably familiar with is the adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. There are other derivatives of hormones, but this is one that is um, really concerning. And basically, this overstimulates cortical synthesis in the adrenal glands, which is a separate gland, but um, this ACTH is released, and then the adrenal gland is signaled to make cortisol. Yeah, so the ACTH normally comes from the anterior pituitary, and it still is in this case, but it's because of problems with the intermediate lobe. Mm -hmm. So the common signs of this disease, um, chronic, chronic laminitis, which is inflammation in the hoof, um, weight loss, ulcers in the mouth, um, excessive thirst and urination, hypertrichosis, which is the long and wavy coat of a horse and they will not shed normally. So in the summer months when they should have a short coat, they'll be really thick haired and they get really hot. Um, changes in body shape, they'll have fat deposits on their neck in the main area. Um, you'll see the pot belly shape um, of their belly and then um, there was one more. Uh, muscle wasting. Um, also prone to infection because when they get cuts or scrapes, they take longer to heal and infertility. So these, this is a picture. Um, you can see their really hairy coat, which is not normal unless you know you're in like winter months. Um, and then this is the pot belly shape also. So diagnosis of this disease, it's pretty straightforward when the horse has this long hair coat um, and the waviness. Um, or the classical signs, but if it doesn't show these signs yet or it's early on, it's more difficult to diagnose. 
So basically veterinarians will start with the physical exam and routine blood work to kind of eliminate other things. And then the current tests for this are the dexamethasone suppression test and measurement of plasma ACTH. And this test is usually preferred. And we talked about, I mean you guys read, some of you read about dexamethasone and that one inside. Management, there's no definitive treatment. This is a lifelong management thing. Um, and you can't reverse this disease, but there are things you can do to help. Um, so better husbandry, um, things like clipping the hair, you know, when you are in warmer months so they don't get overheated, uh, cleaning out their bedding because they will be urinating more often, and just making sure that if they do get cuts or scrapes, you're cleaning those, and basically just watching the horse more than you would be normally. Um, regular preventative care, and then um, Prescend is the first and only FDA approved product specifically for horses, and it contains pergoline, pergoline given orally. Basically this acts as a dopamine agonist, so since the pituitary gland is not getting that dopamine, this works to um, kind of supplement for that, and it decreases the hormone production. Yeah, because whenever you see a, a name of a chemical followed by agonist, mm -hmm. that means it does the work like the chemical name. So a dopamine agonist is something that works like dopamine. Or if you had a dopamine antagonist, then that's something that works against it. So um, Regular farrier visits are really important and uh, limited access to lush pasture will help prevent laminitis. Um, and laminitis is the most damaging symptom of this disease. So it's not necessarily the disease itself, it's all of the things that it causes. Um, it has a slow onset, but it causes chronic foot pain and anatomical changes. And they haven't really found the exact, um, I guess, link or why it causes laminitis, but it's related to cortisol and glucose action on the tissues in the hoof wall. So um, also careful management of diet, and veterinarians usually recommend low soluble carbohydrate content feed or forage. And then cleaning and disinfecting superficial wounds is super important because they are prone to infection. And that is all. Do you guys yeah. have questions? Questions? Yes. Yeah. We had a horse on the team that had pushing tomatoes. So we took her home over the summer and was not medicating her. Like she was on that person. Uh, and the vet told us, like, we decided not to use her, we're going to retire her. Because um, the vet told us that being off of her meds for that long, she was prone to fractures and bone mm -hmm. fractures. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew how that was related, because yeah. they didn't tell us how it exactly was related, and we just didn't want to take the risk. Like, I mean, we got her right back on her meds and stuff, but we didn't know if that was something that... It's probably related to the cortisol. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. immune system so <coughs> already, and she's not getting that active life dopamine. Yeah, well, I don't know how the other thing about cortisol, it's an immunosuppressant, it yeah. tends to be. Yeah. So all those there's a class of hormones coming off the adrenal and too much is... Well, and I know just with immunosuppression, because your immune system is working in a different way, it'll make your, because you have like the stem cells and the bone marrow, okay. it'll make them actually break off and turn into something else to try to help your body okay. because so everything yeah, else... So, so yeah, because like people, any like autoimmune person is like prone to osteoporosis okay. and stuff like that, so that's probably... That's probably like, yeah, because we, and we just decided to retire her to mm -hmm. somebody that was like in a trail ride for yeah, that's right. Make it an easy life. Yes. Other questions or comments? Okay.